Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady where I help home business owners win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock-ish. And when you tune into my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the home business community. Um, so I have been doing a series of videos basically on lessons that I have learned um, from burying my mom. Um, we buried my mom on July 12th. She died from uh, from cancer. And so, you know, over the last, gosh, maybe 45, 60 days, there's been a major learning curve. And so I wanted to shoot this series of videos um, to share with you lessons that I've learned with, with the hopes that it sparks conversations in your own family. If you have missed any of them, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist of these videos so that um, you can catch the ones that you missed. So. Today, I want to talk about five things you can do before you pass to make things easier on your family. So again, this applies to you whether you are the person that is, you know, that's in charge, right? Whether you are the, you know, whether you are the person you're, you're doing this planning for your family, or if you're going to be the person that's in charge after death, like I am, these are some things that I have found that um, that would be helpful to you so that you can make it easier on your family. Because once you go, you go. Your family is the one that has to do the work after that. OK, so number one is downsize. <laughs> OK, um, one of the things I will tell you is that, you know, when when you are. I don't know, when you collect your memories, what's important to you may not be important to your family. So I think that downsizing is a great thing to do. If there are things that your children may want, go ahead and give it to them, right? Why not f find out the things that they want now? If it's something that's material, tangible, if it's something that they want, why not go ahead and give give it to them now and then downsize, sell, donate the rest and, you know, so that your all of your belongings are taken care of before you pass. So, um, you know, it's it, because really, if you if if you are in at a stage in your life where all of your children are grown, have established their own families and all that, there are some material things that your your children may not need. Right. They may not need furniture. They may not need um, dishes and that kind of thing. So, you know, so definitely downsizing is a I think is a huge help to your family because like I said at the end of the day if they've already got their own stuff then where are they going to put yours and you what like I said what you might think is valuable to them may not be valuable to them like that there are things that my mom thought we wanted like no <laughs> that's not it you know for me for instance the only thing I wanted was the china because I bought it right? That's, that's the thing that I wanted. That was a gift that I had given to my mom and I wanted that. But, you know, and even for my sister, there was nothing big. It, everything, the things that we wanted could be fit into one or two containers, which, you know, were pictures and those memories and, um, you know, you know, those, those types of things and our own personal memories. But uh, there's a lot of the stuff that my mom thought we would have wanted that we really didn't want. So downsizing, Go ahead and give your family the things that they want. Keep it moving, okay? And then you can make a decision with what you want to do with the rest. Number two is the will, okay? Um, one of the things that, um, you know, my mom did is, you know, she had a will in place. But, you know, writing a will is great, but you got to keep it updated, all right? So your, um, whether your beneficiaries change or if your executor, the executor of your estate changes or whatever, there may, there, there can be some changes that happen over time. So just writing that one will is not a set it and forget it thing. You still got to keep it updated. Even with your life insurance and all that stuff, you got to keep your beneficiaries updated and all that stuff. So definitely write a will. You want to have a copy in, um, you know, in a safe place, whether it's a fireproof safe or something, have it, you, you can go ahead and file it in the county where you're going to be living. Just go ahead and get it done. And, you know, and so if, and if you update it, you can refile it. But I guess the thing about it is with the will is that, um, you know, 
if you're to the point where you're like, okay, this is the last will I'm doing, like for sure, you know, like in the case of a terminal illness, if you really know that, okay, this time is imminent, then that's something that you just want to go ahead and get filed with the county um, and, you know, and save that, that part for, so your family doesn't have to do that. Okay. It's just an administrative thing, but, you know, making sure that the executor is still willing to serve because your executor serves as your personal representative. These are, this is the person that's generally an uninterested party that is going to distribute your stuff the way that you said, not, you know, because somebody's getting wrapped up in some feelings, right? So you definitely want to make sure the executor of your will at, you know, is, is, still willing to serve, still able to serve. Make sure you have current contact information for the executor of your will. That really does help, let me tell you. Okay, number three is writing an advanced directive. And this, this is where we're talking about life-sustaining measures. What is it that you really want to see happen in your, in your medical care? Um, you know, in the case for my mom, you know, she had a do not resuscitate order. And, you know, and this was, this was a discussion that we had. And, you know, and I basically told her like, mom, if you're tired, you're tired and it's okay. It's okay if you don't want to be resuscitated. If you're ready to go, it's completely okay. And sometimes our loved ones really need to hear that. But you also have to know what it is that you want to happen with your medical care. So having that advanced directive, you know, will tell, you know, your medical care personnel that that, you know, whether you want to, whether you want to be resuscitated, if you don't want to be resuscitated, if you're going to be an organ donor, all those things that you want to see happen with your medical care, write that advanced directive so that that decision is already made. Because a lot of times, and this is one of the things that my mom was really trying to avoid, the thing that she did not want to happen with us is for one of us, which was either going to be me or my sister making the decision, okay, you know, if she was on life support to turn the machines off. And the thing that she did not want to happen is to see, you know, someone coming back years later being resentful saying, you killed our mom, right? So that's why she wrote that advanced directive to say, no, I don't want to be resuscitated. If this happens, then I want this to happen. She wrote out very specific instructions. So do that for your family to make it easier for your medical care and for those decisions to be made by you ahead of time so that um, so that your family already knows and then those decisions are already made. There's no fighting. There's no if, ands, buts. Decisions to be made. It's already done. Um, next is a power of attorney. Now, this is actually more crucial than you think. So uh, the power of attorney can be for medical, but it also can be financial. Okay, so... Even when you die, you still got to file a tax return, okay? So whether you are single or you're married, you still have to have a, um, you still have to file a tax return. Whoever is left has to file your, your tax return for you, your personal tax return. We're not talking about an estate, re estate return, but the power of attorney will give that person the, um, the ability to sign your tax return and file it because otherwise you got to go through a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, also with the financial um, power of attorney, you know, you got your bank accounts. So if no one else is on your bank accounts, then, you know, what happens? Then your bank accounts have got to go through probate and all that stuff. Don't do that, <laughs> right? Don't do that to your family. Like, um, you know, in my mom's case, either my sister or I are on one of her accounts, but you can also make your accounts payable on death so that, you know, you know, basically says when you die, it's this account becomes payable to this person. Okay. So you can do that. But, um, you know, but having those power of attorneys in place, you can have, you know, special power of attorneys, powers of attorney that says that I want the, you know, this person to be able to perform these functions in the event that I'm capacitated. And, you know, and especially for my business owners, you definitely need to have this in place because you need to have that succession plan for your business. Like what's going to happen with your business when you pass away? Who's going to take over? Who is going to make the financial decisions for your business? You need to have that plan already done. Okay. So, um, so that is, you know, those having that power of attorney is absolutely, um, is absolutely crucial to, you know, so people know what happens 
to your business when you pass away. And then the next is planning your final arrangements. Now, nobody likes to think about planning their funeral, but you know what? Nine times out of 10, you're going to have one, all right? You're going to have some type of service. You you know, whether you want to have a traditional uh, funeral, if you want to be cremated, um, you know, you know, plan those things out where you want to have your funeral. If there's a specific church, if there's a specific funeral home you want to use, where you want to be buried, just all of those details that, um, that are involved in you leaving this earth, like writing your obituary. You know, what do you want to be said about you when you're gone? So write your obituary. And really from a person, uh, from a personal development standpoint, when you write your obituary and you think about the things that people are going to have to say about you, it does something to you mentally that it, ha it has a mental shift on you. Like say, hey, I might need to get myself in gear and do some things so people have something to say about me when I'm gone. But but really, that's true. You know, write your obituary, write the, the things that you are most proud of in your life that you want to be said about you that you want to remain on this earth um, that that tells about who you are you know it's like that there's that dash right there's when you were born and there's when you die and then there's that dash in the middle what's the dash going to represent so write that out um, for your family so um, you know like I said the even as much as we can be prepared for um, you know for the passing of a loved one it doesn't take away the pain. It doesn't take away all the stuff that has to be done. So it is, it, it, it is prudent of us. We are, it was, it's our responsibility to make this as, as easy on our families as possible when we're gone so that there's no questions about what needs to be done. There's no, there's none of that stuff. OK, and um, and doing that before you pass, that allows you the time to talk to your family, to say, hey, these are the things that I want done. Here are all of the documents, you know, making sure your documents are stored in a safe place and somebody knows where they are. <laughs> right. It's not cool to store your stock, your documents in a safe place and nobody knows where that safe place is. That is not cool. But um, but to do that for your family so that you know, again, there's no questions, there's, you know, explicit directions and um, people can really focus on the important thing at that time, which is going to be the grieving part, because, you know, trying to do things in your grief is very hard. Um, grief in itself causes its own distractions because, you know what, this is, you know, the passing of a loved one is a huge life changing event. Like, I don't care how many times it happens, it's still a life-changing event. And that in and of itself is, um, is a weight that, you know, the people that you leave behind, they're going to have to get used to a new normal without you in their lives. So the best thing that you can do for them is to allow them to, the space to grieve that loss without having to deal with the business end of a funeral any more than, uh, than what's necessary right? That's it. So um, yeah, I hope this um, this series of videos has really been helpful to you. Um, but I, I, like I said, I really hope it sparks conversations in your family so that you can get down with the planning of things so that, um, you know, so your family isn't left with that burden because it, it, it can be really hard. You know, there's a lot of stuff that just can be really hard. And um, yeah, so I just hope this sparks conversations, whether it's with your parents, if you've got aging parents, or if you are the aging parent, you know, you talk to your kids and, and plan for them so that they can move forward. And especially, oh my goodness, especially if you have minor kids, you got to make a plan for them. Like who's going to take care of your kids? If you, if you and your, your spouse get in an accident and both of you die instantly, What's going to happen to your kids? Who's going to take care of them? You have to have a plan for that. Nobody likes to think that that will happen, but it's absolutely a possibility that it can happen because you think about when mom and dad go out on a date, there is nothing guaranteed that they won't get hit by a truck before they get back home, right? 
So this is why you got to plan even for your minor kids, what's going to happen with them in the event of your demise. Okay. So again, this is the spark conversation. I hope that you um, apply this to your life while you have it now. <laughs> All right. And um, yeah, so that's it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to Home Biz Tax Talk. Again, we air Monday through Friday, nine o'clock-ish. And you can come right here to get your questions answered about your home business taxes. All right. Have a great day and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.